we're going to set up some custom key bindings. So to begin with, I have a platformer character with some animations, and they have the platformer behavior. Along with that, I have these three events set up, where when the button is clicked, it will remove the key binding from the variables we have set up. And those variables are these global variables here, under this structure called control. Key jump, key left, key right. And then the button we want to press as a string inside that variable. So if I preview the game, when I press on these keys, left, right, or spacebar, it will remove that variable from the list. Like that. Now, with that as the starting point, we're going to go to the platformer character, turn off the default controls, so you can no longer use the arrows and spacebar, then we're going to add these controls here. So we're going to look for the condition key pressed, and we're going to use the text expression version of that condition. And in here we're going to type in control for that variable, select that, and then we're going to start with the jump. And so when this variable control jump is pressed, then we're going to simulate a jump. There. Now if I preview the game, I can press space to jump, because this is space, and when I remove it, I can no longer jump. So now we'll do the same thing for the other two key presses, and we'll use left and right, and we'll change these to simulate pressing left for the player, and simulate pressing right for the player. So now I can use the A and D keys to move back and forth, because these here are linked up to the character. And then when I remove them, I can no longer go in that direction, because now this is just blank. So now to put something back in after we've removed the variable. So with the condition any key pressed, we're going to check if a variable has something inside of it. So we'll go global variable, text, because all of this is being done with strings, or text. And we'll start with jump again, and then we'll put in two quotations for blank. So if this variable for jump key is blank, then we can copy this for the jump key, remove the quotations, and open the expression builder. We can look for last key pressed. There's the expression for last key pressed. So now, when I press any key, it will check if the global variable for key jump is blank, and if it is, replace it with whatever I pressed. So let's try that out. If I preview the game, remove the spacebar, so it's gone, and then I'll press C. There it is. And now I'll jump. So now I can use D and A to move back and forth, and C to jump. And then I'll do the same thing with the other two key bindings. One for left, and one for right. So now I have default key bindings based on what's already in the global variable structure. And when I remove them, I can replace left now by pressing J. And then I can replace right by pressing Y. And suddenly my key bindings are Y and J to go back and forth. Now with this setup, if you have all of them removed, that would happen. So instead, you can do a couple of different things. And the easiest way to do it is probably to make it so that if these are blank, then the buttons won't work. And so to do that, we'll just put these as a sub-event, and copy these three conditions. And now with all three of these conditions here, I can change this to not equal to. And now as long as none of the variables are blank, they'll work. But if one of them is blank, then that no longer works. So only one of these will be blank at any given time. And so now when I press the key, it will replace it, and I'm able to remove another one again. And now in case you have any trouble with that system, and need to fix it, check out this video.